I had no idea what YouTube would become when I uploaded my first video in 2008. Hi, I'm Christopher Hopkins, and I've been doing television makeovers and beauty segments for going on 18 years now. And along the way, I've had a few looks myself. A few of you have been following my journey since the very beginning, but most have discovered us only fairly recently. So with that in mind, I wanted to create something that explains where we started, how we got here, and where we are hopefully going. It was in the spring of 2017 when we were presented with, I like to call it, an opportunity we couldn't refuse. Hello, I'm Christopher Hopkins, and I'm the founder of Christopher Hopkins Salon also the founder of Christopher Hopkins Image Center. I was founder and co-owner of Revamp Salon Spa. I am also the founder and owner of The Makeover Guy Incorporated. I believe that if I'm honest with you, you'll understand the truth. We're taking this one day at a time, and you and I are going to share our future together. Watch. Napoleon Hill once said that every adversity, every failure, every heartbreak carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. Now I've faced more than my share of adversity and failure, and I've tried to see them as opportunities for growth. But when heartbreak is added to the mix, I'm just shattered and go numb. It was in that fog, that spring, that I got into my car and just drove. Is it by instinct? My heart led me to where it all began, to the historic Mississippi Riverfront and the falls of St. Anthony. Long before the only falls on the Mississippi built a thriving metropolis, before it witnessed the 35W bridge collapse heard around the world, before buildings scraped the sky to admire its beauty, before 80 passenger cars a day crossed its path before it made Minneapolis the flour milling capital of the world and fed lumber mills a seemingly endless supply of virgin white pine timber from the north. And more than 12,000 years before our Franciscan friar claimed and renamed it after St. Anthony, the patron saint of lost things, it was not lost to the native stewards who revered its sacred powers. From its birth near present-day St. Paul, to its final resting place, this spiritual energy vortex offered healing, wisdom, energy, and insight. Its call drew the huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. And among them came my pioneer ancestors. Franz Arns, a 24-year-old Prussian farmer from Block Royland, and Anna Marie Mines from Waxweiler, crossed over the river and through the big woods, got married and built their home, and raised ten children, Adolf Weidenbach, a medical student in Berlin, and Cecilia Bukowski from Kitznia, Poland, also crossed over the river and through the big woods, got married and built their home, and also raised ten children. Around 1898, Annie and Frank's son, Peter, hopped the Sioux Line train back to the falls, where he worked in the flour mills as a nail maker. After he'd saved enough money, Cecilia and Adolf's daughter followed suit. After they were married less than a mile from the falls, they built their home. While Peter served as a Minneapolis police officer, it's where they raised their daughter Virginia and their son Werner. And it's where Virginia met and fell in love with Morris and raised their children. It is where their son Mike fell in love with my mother Joanne Hewitt. And it is just one block away from the falls that I met and fell in love with Bob. The year was 1988. After my failure to make it big in Los Angeles and San Francisco, I was living in subsidized housing, working for minimum wage at a Regis hairstylist's 
in a suburban shopping mall. So when presented with the opportunity to manage the salon at St. Anthony, Maine, I jumped. Get up on your feet. Put your hands Overlooking Main Street and the river, it had been billed as the premier shopping and dining destination in the Twin Cities. But due in part to the development of River Place, a $120 million retail, housing and entertainment complex only a few blocks away, the mall and the salon were all but dead. It was baptism by fire with my new responsibility to bring it back to life. Most had quit before I started, and only one remained after, Megan Deloney. Megan had about five years on me in experience and age, and enjoyed a somewhat quiet satisfaction with my struggles. But soon we had a strong team with a purpose, and it was during that hottest summer on record that the team of Anne Louise McDonald, Margaret Ellen McIntyre, Megan Deloney, and Christopher Hopkins canvassed the neighborhood with promotions and offers, and it was there we became good friends. And it was also there on Thursday, August 18th at 4.30 p.m. that a totally adorable University of Minnesota College sophomore quietly slipped into the salon for what would be the first and last haircut he would ever pay for. It was good times and great memories. That is until a recession and a relocation to the new Saks Fifth Avenue Beauty Salon in downtown Minneapolis where I was demoted to assistant manager. It wasn't pleasant. But of course, that adversity carried with it the seed of an equal greater benefit. So blindly, with no business knowledge whatsoever, I took that seed and planted it in an empty office space near an industrial park in the middle of nowhere. Live from KSTP-TV St. Paul, Minneapolis, this is Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 6.30. Grand opening for a new salon tonight. Now, usually we don't cover salon openings. That's true, but this one is a little special. <laughs> because this is the salon responsible for the hair and makeup of all of us, the on-air people at Channel 5. It's Christopher Hopkins Salon in the Hubbard Building on University Avenue. There, of course, there are Margaret and Anne Louise who worked with Christopher as well. What a dream team. Everyone was totally on board. It took plenty of time, patience, money, love under the cloudy skies of an economic recession, but it was my appearances on the most watched local television show in the entire country that made all the difference. First, we want to introduce you to the man that did the makeovers from the Christopher Hopkins Salon, which is located right here in KSTP. If you want to have your hair done, he and his troops can do it. Welcome, Christopher Hopkins. Christopher Hopkins is joining us from the Christopher Hopkins Salon. Yes, Christopher Hopkins from the Christopher Hopkins Salon. Joining us with more is Christopher Hopkins of the Christopher Hopkins Salon. Christopher Hopkins is joining us from the Christopher Hopkins Salon. Christopher Hopkins from the Christopher Hopkins Salon. The Christopher Hopkins Salon, by the way, is right here in KSTP building. But when the fruits of labor appeared, they were enjoyed by all. Still, that dream was limited by location, size, and the fact that it was a rental salon. It needed to be transplanted to a more comfortable, peaceful, and professional environment where it could attain and maintain its ultimate potential. And I began to work on the creation of Christopher Hopkins Image Center. It was an expensive, nail-biting time, with many unexpected opportunities of learning and growth. One employee who I had trained and who was already busy with clients called from her vacation in Hawaii to let me know she wasn't coming back. Reworking my plan, I hired another, Tara Farley. Tara was still an awestruck teenager directly out of beauty school. But unlike her predecessor, Tara was interested in listening and following my direction. I taught her everything I knew. She became much more than an employee. She became one of my best friends. During a makeover shoot at the Mall of America, I met Dawn Turkla. She had everything I was looking for. Our mutual respect was palpable. 
meet Christopher Hopkins. Christopher's 29 years old. He owns a beauty salon right here at KSTP, but his goal is to open an image center in downtown Minneapolis, something he intends to do by the fall, and he teaches others to be stylish. Welcome, please, Christopher Hopkins. When this segment aired, I had spent months in negotiations for a space in Gavaday Common, and I had the confidence that it would happen at any moment. Christopher, how do you teach other people to be stylish? Isn't it something they either have or they don't? No, I disagree. I think anyone can have a certain amount of style. I think they have to have the desire to have a certain amount of style. Now, when you say style, do you mean clothing? I, yes, I mean a look. I think to have actual style, you have to have a certain personal integrity with yourself and values that you have set for yourself. And if you're in line with that, you'll have your own style. We just kind of silhouette to reflect that into inner style. That's what I like to do. All right, let's take a look at some of the style you have when it comes to how you live. Everything was falling into place. Robert and I had somehow managed to purchase our first condo on the river, overlooking the city with a view of the falls. And I had a dream team working together to make my dream come true. Well, good luck with that image salon. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> well, it turned out that I would need more than just luck. 